Hi, my name is Melinda and in this video I'm going to show you how to use Photoshop brushes in Digital Scrapbook Artist. And after you've watched this video, you should watch my other videos showing you how to actually make brushes in Digital Scrapbook Artist. Now just so you know, there are thousands of free Photoshop brushes available and using a little bit of a workaround, you can now use them in Digital Scrapbook Artist. So let's begin. I'm just going to go down to YouTube because I just want to show you something quickly. When you're watching this video about um, the Photoshop brushes, I want you to also look on the right hand side because I'm going to supply two links for you. The first link is the ABR viewer and the second link is the free photo brushes. Once you click on those links, you'll be on the different screens. First thing you definitely want to do is get the ABR viewer. It's completely free, doesn't cost anything. You just download it and then unzip it and place it on your computer. The next thing that I want you to do is once you've got that downloaded is go onto the next link that I'm supplying and that's some free Photoshop brushes. And you can see that there are different images. There's also download links. If you go down this page, you see different categories. You can click on any of these and get even more brushes. And you know what, if you wanted even more brushes, just do a Google search for free Photoshop brushes or free ABR brushes. You can also buy brushes, but why buy them if they're free? You can get tons of them for free. So let's begin. So first thing I've done is I decided to take this image right here and I've downloaded it onto my computer and I've unzipped it. Now I need to go into the ABR viewer. So let's close this and let's close this and I'm on my um, desktop. All I need to do is go over to my ABR Viewer folder that I've already um, unzipped. And then if you notice, I've got two uh, files in here. So the first one I want to do is the file folder, open that up, and then you've got a green icon. So just double click on this, and now you are in the ABR Viewer. Go to the top of the screen, click on File, and then Open Brush Set. You just basically need to find wherever you saved your ABR file to that you just downloaded. In my case, it's right here. I'm just going to click on it and then click on Open. And then you just have to wait a little while. Now, if you look at the bottom of the screen, you can see that it says it is scanning the files and you can see that it's now loading them up. These are all of the brushes that are inside of that ABR file. You have two choices now. You could go over here to the name of the file and right click on it and then click on export thumbnails and then select wherever you want it on your computer and click on OK. Or you could go to the top of the screen, click on thumbnails and then you can export it as well. If you also wanted to play with these, you could just double click on any image and then if you click on it again, you can test the brushes just by moving them around. All right, so that's basically it. Now that um, you've extracted them, I'm just going to close this. I'm going to go back into Digital Scrapbook Artist and in my backgrounds, frames, materials, letters, layouts, you can see that those are all empty. If I want to, I could go to Photos and click on Add and add my new brushes that way, but I actually like to go to the top of the screen while everything is empty and click on Digikit Creator. Once I do that, you're going to see the Digital Kit Creator box appear. And here you have, you know, backgrounds, frames. Again, everything is empty because there's nothing in these categories. I'm just going to click on Embellishments and then I'm going to click on Import and Add Files. Now these are the brushes that I just downloaded. So I'm just going to click on, you know, one, hold down the control key on my keyboard, click on a few more, and then just click on open. I've actually only opened four of them. The reason for this is it's going to take too long if I open them all up with this video. So this is just to cut things down. So these are my four images. They're all in my embellishments tab. At this point, I could save the digikit. I'm just going to click on done. Now I can easily just drag them from my embellishments onto my page. And now that this is on my page, I now can also color fill them with any effect. And I'm in the edible effect. And I'm just going to try this one. And then when I click on it, you're going to see that it gives it a beautiful effect. I mean, this is lovely. If I click on it again and then go over to this effect called chewed gum, you can see again, I get a very, very pretty effect. Now, if I close this, I turn off the effects, I should say, you're going to see the reason I'm getting such pretty effects is because there's all this shading 
on these brushes. Now when the person actually created these, they used a transparency level. So if I now click on this, send color fill to the front and try to color fill it red, you're going to see that nothing is happening. There is a way around that. All you do is while the image is selected, double click on it using your uh, left mouse button and you're going to be in the Photos Adjustments tab. While you're in here, you've got your Preview and then you've got your little pull down tab. I'm just going to click on Add Adjustments and I'm going to go directly to Levels. Over here, there's a little slider. I'm just going to slide this over to the right hand side and you're going to notice that this now color fills with red because red is the color I've selected. To keep it that way you click on OK and then you click on OK again. And now since red is selected and it is now actually no longer black, I can color fill this any color that I want and you're going to see that it's going to take the color of whatever I've decided on. So. That's one quick thing. While this is still that color, I can still go back and I can still apply a special effect to it and get this really cool look. Now, if you were going to be creating a brush, what I would suggest you do is make sure you color fill it, apply the levels, and then turn it into a uh, PNG file, which you can then open into your brushes. Now, if you forget to do that, let me just show you what will happen. Here are two brushes. Let's try the black one first. I'm just going to go over to my brush and I'm just going to draw. And what I want to do is I want to change the color of this. Now if you don't like the brush that you've created, you can easily click on uh, this brush thing right up here. And then you can go into your photograph that you've taken and basically just go down to the repeat method and change it to one of these. I'm going to click on simple, I'm going to click on OK and now you can see I've got a different pattern. If I click on select, select this image, send the outline to the front and try to color fill the outline, you're going to see that nothing happens. That's because when I created this brush, I took a photograph of these images without changing the color levels. Now if I take the same photograph but this time change the color levels. Let's just apply this brush. Let's change this back to simple. Click on OK. Now if I send the outline to the front, I can color fill this any color that I want. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. My email address is lovemyzombie at yahoo.ca.